Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth, and today we are going to be looking at radioactivity. And our subtopic for today is half life. So we're going to be looking how to calculate half lives uh, and do a few calculations. So when a radioactive nuclear decades, a new nuclear is formed, just like we have seen from the alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So as disintegration proceeds, fewer and fewer unstable atoms remain. So all the radioactive isotopes spontaneously decay. To, to some, it happens fast, while others, it takes a lot of time. So one factor that scientists take into account is the term the half-life. So this is the time taken, this is the definition, time taken for a given mass of a radioactive isotope to decay to its original uh, mass. So its half-life is represented by this uh, value. So how much time would it take for it to decay to half of its original value? So the shorter the half-life, the faster the rate of decay. So if it takes a shorter time to decay at least to half of its original mass, then it needs to decay very fast. Uh, if the half-life is bigger, it means it will take longer time or it will, it will be very slow. So the less the half-life, the more unstable the nuclide is, meaning it will take less time. So the half-life period is determining determined use the, using the uh, GM tube, uh, it is connected to a meter that records the count per unit time. So we can also use count rates per unit time when we are determining the half-life. This is the rate of decay of a disintegration of the nuclei. If the count rates per unit time fall by half, then the time taken for its fall is the half-life period. It can be represented in graphical methods. So you can see the count per second in time. So we start with 80 counts per second. So if we were to look at half of those counts, so it will take uh, six days to uh, achieve half of the half of 80. So 80 is the total like count that occurs for this compound or radioactive isotope. So for it to, to decay to half its original count, which is 40, it will take six days. So six days is the half-life. Same case is considered. So the amount of mass uh, that we started with is 400. So the time is um, on the x-axis. So for us to get 400 divided by 2, which is the half mass, which is 200, uh, 200 grams. Uh, so for us to get 200 grams, it tells us that it is 8.1 days. So, so for every 8.1 days, it's going to be declining by 200 grams. So that is the half life, the 8.1. So it means that we can use graphs also to calculate half life. So you can also be told to given some data and then you're told to present. So your work is only to identify the half of what you're given in your data and then you can be able to do your calculations and get the half-life. So there are other ways of calculating the radioactive or half-life. We can use a formula or we can use uh, the direct method. So first of all, you are given 100 grams of a radioactive isotope of iodine. It takes eight years to decay to a half. This is the half-life. And how many grams will remain after that two years? So if you are to use the step-by-step -step method, you start with 100 grams. So after every eight years, it divides by half, so it becomes 50. So we keep on adding more eight years. After another eight years, it becomes 25 grams. So those are 16 years in total. After another eight years, it turns to 12.5. So that's 24 years in total. And then after another eight years, it becomes 6.25, which totals to 32 years. And alternatively, you can use the formula. So this is the formula of calculating half-life. So we have the final quantity, the initial quantity, and then we have the time of a half-life. So in our question now, the initial quantity, what we are starting with is 100 grams. And then the half-life, we already have T and a half, which is eight years, and T is 32 years. So you just put that in your equation. And then when you divide 32 by eight, Eight, you get four so when you do the calculation that is one over 16 and that gives you 6.25 
either you use the long process or the method, you're still going to get the same value. So let's look at us a few questions. So the half-life of bismuth is 210 in five days, starting with 250 grams of the radioisotope, calculate the mass that will be left after 15 days. So we used a long method, so we start with 250 grams. So it means that 250 grams, it reduces uh, five, after every five days, it's going to reduce. So the first half life, the first half is going to, you are going to divide 250 divided by two to get um, 125. But how are you able to know how many halves to work with? So you're going to take the total number of days, which is 15 days. So for after every five days, it decays to a half. So many, how many halves are in 15? This tells us there are going to be three halves. So that is the three halves you're going to use in our long method. So 250 grams, if you divide by two, you get 20, 125 grams. If you divide a half again, you get 62.5 grams. If you divide by half again, now the last one, you get 31.25 grams. So you can see. So this is the first half, second half, third half, and we've gotten that from this calculation. So the final mass that we're going to get after those 15 days is going to be 31.25 grams. So that's how you calculate that question. So the activity of a radioactive lead 210 fell to a one over 32 of its original activity after 110 years, calculate is half life. So, what you notice, you have to know how many halves are there to form 1 over 32. So, the first, we start with 0 or we start with a whole and then it dis disintegrates a half. So, this becomes 1 over 2. When you do another half, it becomes 1 over 4. When you do another half, it becomes 1 over 8, another half, 1 over 16, and finally 1 over 32. So it is 1 over that over that 2, it's original. So this is where we are ending up with at the end of the day. So may, how many halves do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5 half lives. So if we were to take 5 half lives, and the 5 half lives are happening after after 110 years, so we can get half life of 1, like you're going to take the total years, the 2 to get here is 110 years. And each, so we can be able to get how many years it takes to decay by half by dividing by 5 which will give us 22 years. So for after every 22 years, decays by half. After every 22 years, by half. And after every 22 years, like that, like that. And then finally, by the time we get to 1 over 36, we will have reached 110 years. I hope you have been able to understand. So let's look at another question. So in this case, now we are using counts. I told you you can be asked question with counts. So a radioactive substance has an initial activity of 8,400 counts per second. After 12 hours, the activity fell to 525 counts per second. Calculate the half-life. So the first thing that we need to determine is we want to move from 8,400 to 525. So we will know how many halves. So 8,400 counts. If it, um, it disintegrates by half, the first half is going to form 4,200 divided by 2. Then the second half, until we get to 525, it forms 2,100. And then if you do another half, it becomes 1050. If you do another half, it becomes 525. So this tells you our half-lives are 1, 2, 3, 4 half-lives. So we have four half-lives to get to 525. So four half-lives will require, after every 20, 12 hours, the activity. So after 12 hours. So all this happened after 12 hours. That is when we got the uh, 525 count. So what would happen after every half? How many hours would it take? So you're going to say 12 divided by the four half-lives which is going to give you three. So for after every three hours, it, it disintegrates to, uh, to a half its original value. So that's how you calculate that.
So those are the calculations of half-life. I hope you've been able to understand. So in the same calculation, you can feel free to use the formula or you can use the long method. You're still going to end up getting the same answers. So watch out for um, a few questions in the website or the app so that you can get a chance to practice on what you've learned. So see you in the next lesson.